I think you guys will love this, <clears throat> is do you guys realize that virtually everyone in the United States might have one or more TVs? But each year around Christmas, around Super Bowl, there's this giant sale on brand new TVs. Now, if everyone had more than one TV, then why in the hell is everyone selling TV? You can buy TVs from everywhere, right? It's this thing called upgrade. We are okay with upgrading our lives, right? And, and so we get to pick what we want to upgrade on, but then people are mad when you upgrade. Welcome to episode eight of the podcast Unlimited Wisdom with Robert Hollis. I'm Craig A. Jackman along with Matt Hollis, and we are so glad to have you with us today. Our topic is embracing change and growth. So let's get Great started. Topic. Yeah, Absolutely. Matt, Robert, Great welcome. Mm-hmm. Welcome, How welcome, you doing, guys. Craig, the hostess with the mostess. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, this this is a great topic and it's perfect for unlimited wisdom. Yeah, it right. Is. <clears throat> Hi, Matt. Hey, howdy, howdy. How's it going, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we all introduce each other like we weren't just talking or whatever. But yeah, we were talking before we got on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like long all time no see. The scene stuff. Yeah. <laughs> get, to, get to reintroduce ourselves. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, well, like did you want to go on a. Yeah, go ahead, Dad. Uh, Just like Craig said, you know, when you really talk about the subject today of change, um, it still blows my mind how many people don't want to change. You know, and everything that I've done in life, uh, you know, when things change, all kinds of technology, when, you know, companies change, you know, uh, the way they do stuff, maybe a company goes out of business. So now you got to mentally take a make a change of am I going to stay employed and live on the system for the rest of my life? Or am I going to go get another job? (laughs) And one of the things that I think is very unique about a job, and I'll, I'll just start out with this. I've always told people, they go, you know, well, this is hard and this is difficult. And, you know, again, like Craig always says, it's one of his favorite quotes by Henry Ford is, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can And what I've always said to people uh, over all these years is I would say to them, let me just throw out a little bit of imagination for you. Let me share a story with you. And they go, okay. And I said, well, whoever in the family is the main source of income, let's say that they showed up like a lot of people from Toys R Us and other companies, and they show up in the parking lot and there's a chain on the doors saying, we're very, very sorry, but this, this office, is this building is now closed. And so you're freaking out a little bit. And all of a sudden you get this phone call. And the phone call says, <clears throat> Craig Jackman, uh, you know, you've been an employee with us forever. We really love who you are and the way that, you're, that, that you are. And we want to continue not only to employ you, but we'd also like to give you a promotion and a raise along with benefits. Now, here's something that we need to know by Monday. Um, you're going to have to relocate. And that relocation is in Vegas. That's the closest place that we have. And so, you know, let us know. We'll pay for your expenses to, to move there. And we need a decision by Monday. So see, everyone says, I can't change, it's hard, it's difficult. But now Craig immediately has to make a decision, go talk to Susan, uh, talk to his mom, his brother. There's a lot of things that he has to think about if he's willing to make an advancement for him in his life. And it's amazing when you get that kind of deal. So he's changing, he's got to change where he lives, his friends, what he does, everything. And if you guys realize how many people move locations of where they live to get a better job, to continue to work for a company that they have seniority in, and and they can get a rank advance and a promotion. Um, What do the other people do? Well, the joke I've always heard said is that when 
Toys R Us got the bars on the window, the chain on the doors, right? That there's two groups of people. One group gets together in the parking lot and they all start bitching and complaining. And they feel like it was unjust. And maybe we should do a class action lawsuit because uh, we weren't properly notified. And, you know, they all want to do like a picket and they want to call the news stations and really make a, a issue out of this. Another group just goes, oh, I'll figure out what to do. They get in their car and say, well, this is a day off and I'll go to unemployment. I'll fly it, file for unemployment. And then I'll start looking for another job. And then there's the other group of people that they're got squealing noises coming off their wheels as they're leaving the parking lot to be the first to the um, job opportunity place because they know the rest of these people that just got laid off are going to be going after the other jobs. <laughs> and it's like, I need to go find out where I can get another job and try to beat these people. And so I always think that there's such a uniqueness when people are, you know, faced with change. And I used to be that way. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, in my early twenties, where I just went, I need to change everything in my life. I just took an honest view of who I was, how everything in my life was going. And I just said, I need to change it all. And I like that. Everything in my life upgraded. <clears throat> and so I did it again. I did it again. So now me, mentally, whenever things are sort of stagnant for me, I, I'm immediately changing as fast and quick as I can. So I love, love that kind of mentality, even though some people might just be going and you know, Matt and I have been talking along with Craig, all the new stuff we're doing with Unlimited Wisdom, uh, the Imaginator, uh, helping people get to where they want in life, the things we're doing with YouTube. Uh, now, all of a sudden, Matt's got all this new stuff happening with AI. Craig's learning it at the same time. And in the midst of this, everything is happening faster, quicker. And it reminds for me, and Craig, I know you can uh, talk about this, is... Um, you know, it was, uh, I seen how upset and how worried everybody was with the thing called the internet. And I can remember going to, uh, I believe that it was, it used to be called um, Fry's. I remember going to Fry's like it was yesterday and getting a the first Pentium computer <laughs> and and yeah. it had yeah. a hard drive in it. It had 500 megabytes of hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting because that that fits in that realm, and that's is the embrace change thing, right? Like oh, the absolutely. the amount of transistors and the things that have exponentially changed is not never going to slow down because it doubles at such an exponential rate that now we're just kind of at this point where everyone's going to have to face change whether they like it or not over the next year. Um, you know, before we got on here, even the other day, um, a new Pew research study came out and said already 20% of the workforce in the United States is using chat GPT to help them with their work. And to think that I'm, I was telling these guys, it's like, I've, I don't think there's mm -hmm. ever anything that's been adopted other than maybe computers and the internet, maybe not even that at no. this level of speed into the workforce. And of mm -hmm. course, eventually there'll be one person working with GPT that does 50 people's jobs, right? And right. and that, that moment's coming. So a lot of people are gonna have to embrace that change and what they wanna do next. And it's like, uh, I just thought that this would be such a great topic for us to talk about because so many people, ourselves included, are going through that, that feeling of having to embrace change, right? Yeah and see this whole new area so yeah it changes especially now i mean it's as if ex like you say exponentially things have have happened i mean when you look back at our parents and they see i look back at my mom for example and i see what she's gone through through the years and um now she was born you know 1939 but um i mean just from that point and of course then you had certain things that were set. 
you do this, you do that, you do the other, you go to college, you get a good degree, you do the 40, 40, 40 plan that we've always uh, brought up. And then you retire and you live out the rest of your days without any issues. It ain't that way no more. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it definitely is, isn't. The problem is it, um, a lot of people are not embracing the fact that change is a constant. Change is consistent. And unless we are able to adapt to those changes, we're going to get left behind. And we're, this is a probably the most perfect time because everything is happening all at once. Right. Um, whereas it was slow and steady beforehand. Now we have computers that have totally changed our lifestyle. You know, it used to be we would pick up a, a, a hard lined phone and we would just be have it in our head <laughs> like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now we're plugged in or not even necessarily plugged in using the phone line because that's what we're doing with our computers. But now we have this little guy, our cell phone, that is pretty much like a little computer now. And it you is. can do. Oh, so it's, it definitely on. is. Yeah. Without and, a shadow of a doubt. It's yeah. like. Most people, I think, utilize more computing things nowadays because of smartphones. And I, I linked you guys this video, too, because this is another one of those great embrace change things, right? There's this moment where this guy um, called out Steve Jobs after he had just came back from back to Apple after he was fired and let go, right? And so he's on stage and this dude's talking to him and he's like, first of all, what have you been up to for the last seven years? And second of all, uh, the 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 ways at which you're talking about make it, it doesn't make any sense. And Steve Jobs responds to this guy, first of all, by acknowledging that he's right. But then he also says to him, I don't think of problems from the technology down. I think of them in the opposite direction. I think of them mm -hmm. of the consumer up to that point. How do we get, how do we merge these two things together? And it's like, I'm seeing that now in live time with AI, of course, where it's had to go through this process of being like very like niche. And the more and more it starts permeating in these different fields and the more people start utilizing it, the more they're starting to now see that this is an Internet computer like event. Right. Absolutely. It's like tech, the technological endpoint, if you even want to think of it that way. Like if you think of the exponential growth of humanity over the invention of the computers, and then you see where we are now and where we're going. It's it's almost like the end of our evolution, the beginning of what's next. Yeah. You know, because there's really no we've kind of hit our peak um, as human beings, the things that we're somewhat capable of. And I think that that's one of the interesting things about embracing change, too, is that we're going to have to go into this new field of embracing that there's something out there that we have created as a as a race that is stronger and better than us. It's our child in a sense, all of us, because <laughs> yeah. it's utilizing all of our information. We've nurtured it and built it to where it exactly. is today. And Matt, you know, it's there, interesting, there. Matt. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the, what, the way you were talking, that's kind of how I have helped my mom transition into today's technology is, okay, based on my understanding, how can I interpret it in a way that my mom can understand it. Yeah. Well, I and mean, even that is a big so issue. True. And, but at the same time, she, you know, obviously we, she wants the glory days and we all want the glory days, but that's not going to happen. Right. Uh, Isn't it interesting? Glory days is an interesting concept because it's like, in a sense, glory like days glory is just, a, days. well, I was going to say glory days in a sense are like uh, just nostalgia. Like it's just yeah. a different word for nostalgia, right? It's like, oh, I want things to be as simple as they used to be. And it's like exactly. the reality is that yeah. they were simpler because you are a less complex human being at that time. You've mm -hmm. evolved and your mind has grown and your wisdom has grown to a point that now you think about more things than you did then. And what you miss is the the simplicity of not having to right. think about so much shit. The reality <laughs> is, is that you could do that for yourself now. You can, yeah. you can work on your mind enough to bring it back to that simplistic state and to think about those positive things and not have so much noise 
but it's just not a skill that we normally train people to do. It's something you have to train yourself no. to do like meditation. So, and the other thing too, when you look back is okay. When, uh, when our parents, Robert, yours and my parents were Matt's age or younger, they were going through what we are going through, but I, I will, and maybe in their mind as exponentially as we are today. Right. So, uh, you know, I mean, okay. The, 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 to me, the classic is the, um, you know, going from the horse and buggy to the car. I the mean, industrial just, revolution you know, in, in industrial general. Revolution. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. Indoor, so, indoor plumbing, indoor plumbing, refrigeration. It wasn't, it wasn't that long ago when right. I used to sit down with my grandma and grandpa, they had uh, nine kids, right? <clears throat> and most of the boys left home because of going into the military. Okay. Yeah. But they all worked on a, on a farmstead, a homestead. And, and it's like every time someone said, well, did you hear that? You know, the people in town have a electricity. Did you hear people in town have indoor plumbing? And just like people do now, they said basil, uh, you know, the, the, my great grandfather, you know, he said, uh, my grandfather, yeah. And, and uh, he said, <clears throat> we don't need things that we've never needed. Yeah. We got here. Now people got other things. And I even remember Terry and I were watching uh, some kind of show and I don't remember what it was, but it was really unique where people came into town and it was the first time that people seen electric appliances. And it was the same thing. You you don't you now can store stuff and refrigerate it, but they use blocks of ice. <laughs> right. Can you know? imagine what the Amish go through right now because they are that way in today's lifestyle. They don't have electricity. Basically, they work from sunrise to sunset. They you they uh, they use very rudimentary things, uh, hand pumps for water. I don't think they have you, uh, it, true plumbing I like mean, we do now. One of the interesting things about that is I do think that there's going to a lot of things like that are going to come full circle once AI is doing a lot of shit. Like mm -hmm. I, I think in a lot of ways, there's certain human beings that will go back to hunter gatherer aspects because they're not OK with the the technological aspects. And they'll go, listen, I just want to ranch with my own cattle and stuff where I can raise my family right. and that will be fine for them. And then there's other people that are going like, I want to change the world with this technology or I want to do this or that. And I think regardless of what your choice is, you're still embracing change, right? right. Like regardless if you choose to be like, no, I'm going to go make a ranch, right? That's still a change in your life and that's perfectly fine. I think a lot of people sometimes think of certain things as old fashioned, but the reality is, is a lot of that stuff's like human, right? right. Uh, and in in some ways we've stripped our humanity down and become more like computers ourselves and we rely on them so much to i don't know dictate our emotions dictate our thoughts our feelings we get so much information from technology and from mm -hmm. other people at this point you know if you think about it just in the simple fact that right now the internet is probably 50 percent or more fake AI generated stuff already. And it's going to become even more so the case. So believe it or not, the internet's drastically speeding towards a, a situation where it, most of it is synthetic. Most of it's right. not organic. And I think that that will then like, we have a record player, we have vintage records, we have stuff like that. And I think those ter certain things are just going to come full circle. Um, I was even talking with some filmmakers after the, all the Sora stuff came out. And it's like, I, I know for a fact there's still going to be people that are going to go back and make movies the old fashioned way and that those will be embraced because they remain the old fashioned way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and that's just the way human beings are. Right. We're like, oh, that Same makes us human. That's our invention. Same with old movies. You know, it always seems like someone can do a movie that's in the in the past and we immediately embrace it. You know what I mean? It's like. Uh, you know, do a movie like in the 60s or the 50s or golly, when when was uh, the date of Oppenheimer? 
You know what I mean? It's yeah, like 1940s. Uh, yeah. So 19, it's, it, yeah. it's pretty amazing. And um, one of the things that I, I heard on a recent podcast is the guy was talking about how ancient that our thinking is. And so this guy's a very well-known physicist. And he was saying that all of a sudden there was a time in the world not too long ago, you know, probably 20 years or so, where everyone started going into string theory. And he said he for, everyone forgot the core basics of physics. So he goes, let me give you an example. He said, and people that are old will get this right away. So if you were traveling further than your state, you had to get a state by state map. And he goes, so not only are you opening up this map that covered a kitchen table, a big one. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, <clears throat> but now you're figuring out what where one point is and then where the other point is. And he goes, isn't it amazing that we use GPS today? But do you realize that it's still in that physics? It's not even, you know, even Google Maps. He says, so we used to do, you know, the map and move it all over the table. But now what we do is we pinch in or, or push out. He goes, that's only one matrix. One. He goes, we're other thing in life is not only 3D, but even 4D. So he was going to think that GPS on a phone or GPS in your automobile, you still see the vehicle and it, it's still moving the map in just one dimension. In segments, and he goes, yeah. That's, that's, that's nut. Now he says, Google Maps, you can set it for satellite. And in some cases you can see you know, going up and down hills, the different dimensions and stuff. But he says, that's still not how our mind thinks. <clears throat> and he goes, so as soon as we use physics with AI to break down when you're traveling from point A to point B, he was even using, you know, when you're sitting in an airplane, it, it, it just shows you where you're traveling. But he says, there is a stacking effect on this. And he goes, <laughs> but and so all of a sudden he's going, you're not just on a flat thing that you you have to push around. <laughs> it's like watching in the, when you're flying and watching the the little map thing on your screen in front of you that's showing you point A to B, and then you click on plus and it zooms in. For, you got you get the world view, then you get the regional view, then you get the local view, then you get the airplane view. Yeah. And it just keeps going in and in and then out and out. And oftentimes, because exactly what you're saying, Robert, our thinking sometimes is so two-dimensional. Right. That we cannot think along the fact that we are not just going from left to right, from mile one to mile 500 to mile 700 to mile 1,000, but we're also having to now think of that third dimension of, Okay, now we're 500 feet off the ground, 10,000 feet off the ground, 20,000 feet off the ground, the, the triangulation of the whole thing. And we don't think about that like we are right now. But yeah. And he just said, because the, the programming of the way that we think now that AI is now radically changing is he goes, now some people have an Apple Watch. And so when Terry and I go for a walk, to think that it not only tells us the distance, but there's also a part that says that we went 10 stories. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. from the bot from us walking to the lowest altitude to the highest altitude is a thousand feet. And and some people go, What? I, I didn't feel myself going up and down. But wait a minute. Every time you're walking someplace, you're looking forward and it's usually either going down or up. You just don't. <laughs> yeah, it's you, know, like the, so you don't the feel much earth. of the incline unless it's drastic. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you're looking at it. Right. You know, you yeah, you see the horizon. The street, you go that that 
by the time we get to the end of that this couple of blocks, that's quite a significant higher than I'm standing and looking. But now you're walking on it and it's flat. <laughs> well, I, I think those, that's one of those those interesting things, too, where it's like, um, you know, a lot of this stuff we don't normally think about because it's so common that we don't question it. And I think uh, a lot of things end up being that way until change shows up, like even Craig, where you're like, oh, wait, now it's up, more uphill and I feel it in right, my legs, well, right? I think but, I think the word is perception. Well, yeah. Yeah, the, your perception of things definitely changes yeah, quite a yeah. bit. And, and embracing the change and growth is a lot about your perception and the perception of others right. and how we all integrate all of that together. And boy, what we're experiencing right now with the AI revolution, that is, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, with, not with, too many people can everything. perceive that. I'm sorry, yeah, Robert? With, every, with everything. With the business that I'm in, you know, which I can, I can say with just a description, it just allows me to be able to market to everyone in the world. Because if you have Wi-Fi, you can plug in and be a free affiliate and now market to the world. But like the flat map, here's the way most people think. Craig's already going to go this <laughs> way. So I reach out to people and they go, well, there, is there anybody else doing business in Broken Branch, Arkansas? I'm going, why? Well, I'd like to meet someone face to face and we could like, you know, collaborate on how we're going to capitalize on Broken Branch, Arkansas. And I'm like, <clears throat> I have people all over the world. I have people in Nigeria, Africa. I have people in you know, uh, Asia. I have people in in South America. I have people in uh, uh, Hungary. You know, uh, it's like I got people all over the world in every time zone. And they're like, um, "Yeah, i I know of a I know of a place that does uh, automobile and changes tires, and I'm going to go talk to that guy." And I'm like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> you know what I mean? The person doesn't understand that I have tens of thousands of people responsible for my income and 99% of them I've never met in my life. See, they're, they're just seeking, they're seeking like that mere self-validation that they're making the right decision. They don't trust their own decisions and therefore because they don't trust their own decisions, they put themselves in a point or a place where they need to get that validation from their family and friends to do anything in their life or most things in their life that they want to do. So it's but like, if I don't get that is my point. Yeah, no, right. of course. You know, when you, even if that's what they want themselves, they could feel that internally and not accept that change simply for the fact that others are not accepting of that change that they right. have close to them. And this is why like your circle can be very important to embracing change. You know, like if you're surrounded by a bunch of people that like things the way that they are and don't want them to change, odds are you also will hate change, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're surrounded by a group of people that want things to go back to a way they used to be, when we're probably in the most obvious time that that's never going to happen that's ever existed in humanity, regardless of you, who you vote for or what you do, things are not going to go back to the way they used to be. It's, it's right. just not going to happen. The Pandora's box has been opened for this new uh, technology, this new concept, these new ideas. And once it's been opened like it has and unleashed on the universe, you can't close that box because now everybody's no, <laughs> everybody knows about it. Everybody, there are a lot of people capitalizing on it. And now we are looking for, okay, what's next? So, right. and, and it feeds from one thing to the other, to the other today. And again, I'm going to say today more than in the past. And maybe it's also because, you know, up until this point, something like this has never affected us, at least the th in, in our case, the three of us, but maybe a lot of other people more than at any other time in our lives. That's not right. to say that other people haven't experienced that in their lives at another time earlier prior to that uh, prior to today no yeah it I, it definitely is like a a kind of like wake up moment 
because in in so many ways i feel like every other piece of technology or even if you wanted to take it past that has had a slow build up to adoption for humanity but we're sitting at a situation where this technology can only move fast and it's because it it it's it's an unfortunate time in history that ai exists in the time that it does now it's a it's a pro and a con and i'll tell you why the pro is that i see it as our way out like our way out of this vicious human cycle that we've been in where like we're constantly telling ourselves that for some reason we're we're completely getting better but we still go to war with one another we still torture one another we still we don't yeah. we we tend to be more on the scheme of violence than rehabilitation even for people that are nonviolent which is still like a very animal animalistic part of our brains and our minds that mm. want that um and you know it doesn't regardless of who you are just pick a group or pick someone that's offended you and for some reason you're totally okay with them having bad things happen to them um that's a very human part of yourself and that's a human part of who we are uh, so the pro is, is that I think AI is is living outside of those realms and that gives it the opportunity to think of things. And it's more of just us trusting it and going, OK, it's thinking of a way to do this that we wouldn't think of because we're human and we're thinking of power. We're thinking of money and, and everything like that. And that leads to the negative aspect of AI. Uh, we're probably in the most late stage version of capitalism that's ever existed at the exact same time that AI is being invented. So um, I'm fully well aware that we're gonna have a bunch of years where AI is utilized to make profit margins slimmer, to grow businesses exponentially at the cost of the workforce of the United States and of the world. I think that we're gonna drastically see a bunch of people that will either need to be re-educated um, on different ways of work or will be completely forgotten by the workforce, just like we've seen in the technology, technological innovations in the past, yeah. right? Like every single time there's a new technological innovation, a large amount of the workforce is lost because they don't want to adapt and change. They don't want to embrace the change and learn the new technology. They lean more into, I'll just stay the way that things are mm -hmm. a la blockbuster, right? It's like people are still going to want to come here and rent movies, right? It's like, no, right. they're not right that that eventually won't exist so i think as of right now i'm seeing a lot more of like we're going to go through that capitalistic shit of uh of businesses utilizing this to get rid of employees and make profit margins larger and better first the first couple of years and that embracing of change of that will be kind of volatile i think ai will have a lot of people that will have a lot of validity towards it. And I'm seeing that more now on social media as it gets bigger. Yeah. Um, hatred the, towards it. So, yeah, Matt, th such a great, 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 great point. And um, imagine this idea, right? <clears throat> and I just, when I heard this, I just went, what a fast way to explain to people why I believe AI is so important to change. Okay. Is because of egos edging God out, because of power, because of money, because of all these things, a lot of people don't want to admit that human beings by nature are very self-destructive. You know, everyone mm -hmm. that's watching this, this, this. No, <laughs> we all know it. We can all agree yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. We all know that there's things that we could do on a day-to-day -day basis that are very simple and inexpensive. So I, I heard about this guy, Gary Brecka, you know, that's very big out there. And he was saying, <clears throat> he goes, what do you say to people that can't afford an infrared bed to lay in? Or like 20 grand. And he goes, you go outside bare feet, step on the ground, close your eyes, and just let the sun hit your face for 10 minutes. He goes, the infrared bed is designed for people that have no access to the ground or the sun. <laughs> and he said, some things for people is just time. So I got time to lay in this bed for 10 minutes. I don't have time to go outside with my bare feet 
and let the sun hit my face. Especially if you're in Alaska or the North Pole. <laughs> yeah, or he, he was talking yeah, Santa about Santa Claus isn't getting a lot of sun. Yeah, he was yeah. talking about, um, you know, very congested inner cities. Yeah. Right. You know, so you, you go down 40 floors and get out and you're on concrete and everything around you is concrete or asphalt. I, and you may not I, even see the sun depending upon the angle <laughs> because... I know like in New York, you got all of those huge buildings there and there's like every now and then the sun will finally hit your street, send a uh, beam down that street. And then about five minutes later, it's gone. Yeah. That's why you gotta, you gotta be there. You gotta be in the beam, you know, you gotta be. Yeah. Ready. Exactly. <laughs> and so listen to this. He explained this analogy of how destructive human beings are. And he goes, when I say this and he said, I wish that I wish I could remember the guy that he said. He said, so he says, I'm going to show people a video of Bruce Lee using nunchucks. They go, watch this short video. Wah, wah, you know, doing all this stuff. And he says, when it's done, reach in under a cloth and pull out a set of nunchucks and hand them to somebody. And he goes, they are going to hit their head their elbow, or their nuts. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he goes, because we as human beings watch that video and go, it can't be that hard. Eh, snap. You know, ah. <laughs> I think that's why a lot of people quit shit, right? Because their expectations are like so messed up. And it, 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 it always goes back to like what you've shared in the past, dad, which is like, what we expect we can do in a short amount of time is like mm -hmm. realistically unreliable. But what we expect we can do in three years is also unrealistically unreliable, right? Yeah. Like we <clears throat> go ahead. And that's why people, and that's why people, as soon as they start whipping them around and hit something and get hurt, see, that's done. See, I'm, I I'm done. Everyone knows that if you're learning everything, it's got to take a little bit of time. And he goes, so what's AI like? AI is like a real lightsaber. <laughs> and he goes, can you imagine watching a little episode in a Star Wars, a Star Wars movie, you know, with Yoda fighting and, you know, and going, doing all these flips with the lightsaber and imagine if you pulled up a piece of cloth and there was a real one. And the guy grabs it or the girl grabs it and goes, Wong! and then they, whoosh, and then her arm falls off. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be yeah. good, right? <laughs> and he goes, or God forbid that you're too close to them and, and something on you gets cut off. Turn and it goes, on and it goes right through you. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, he goes, that's human. And if we can just admit that humans know what they can do to not destroy themselves and change themselves for the better, and they just don't do it. And he says, so you really got to pay close attention to people that are excited about change. Because the little bit that I played with AI, and I know Matt and Craig have done it, I know that I'm using it at one billionth of its ability. <laughs> I still feel that way. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not going to let this go by just like I didn't let the internet go by when I bought that Pentium computer, plugged it in. You know, they gave a, gave me five floppy disks, <laughs> you know, that, that were the three by five floppy disk on a band. And you had to load them in to get Netscape Navigator and then you know you're what about the five the inch ones remember that those robert they were yeah. they were even oh, what's more so flying. crazy is you guys I mean, want to hear yes. it? <laughs> so there's like those groups right like you guys had th that progression i was yeah. watching this person that makes video games for a living and they recently went to the game developers conference um where they show off games and people are allowed to come in and try the games out and stuff you have like your own little booth that you built and so he said the first day that they were there, they had a keyboard for the game, keyboard and mouse for their game, and then a controller. And um, they noticed a lot of the 
the people that were Gen Z and stuff were using the controller and stuff. And they're like, we should just get two controllers because no one's using the keyboard, right? Um, so then they go get another controller and hook the controller up. And it, he's like, it didn't dawn on me how crazy different the generations are with technology until this moment. He's like, a group of young kids walked up and they didn't even touch the controller. They tried to touch the screen and you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, like we've we've actually transitioned to a place where all the kids young grew up with iPads and iPhones. Now they played games on these systems. They're used to touching the games now. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, like I, the complexity of looking at a whole keyboard and mouse setup and then the complexity of con of a controller. And then as I was saying earlier, like with Steve Jobs, it's like, oh, everyone has fingers and we know how to use them. If you can touch things, you can figure it out. So you'll see a young kid figure these things out. And it's like, it's just starting to, I think, slowly but surely dawn on a lot of people that there were generational changes before, but they're so significantly different now in comparison to the before. Right, just because absolutely. technology has evolved so much every generation that it's like, if you think of Gen X to boomers, right? Baby boomers. Mm -hmm. There's some societal changes. There's like the Berlin, Berlin Wall falling. There's nirvana there's uh like the punk movement there's a bunch of other things that happen for gen x right that boomers didn't have and normally those are cultural changes but now right. you're seeing massive technology changes in between generations to the point that you have whole groups of people growing up that have never utilized the older version of technology nor care to and you're like right. how do you how do you deal with these kids, right? And exactly. what's so hilarious about this whole concept of embracing change, is we all live in the United States and we all know how bad the US education system is currently. And right. to watch teachers consistently post and go, these kids don't wanna learn how to read. They don't wanna learn how to do any of these things. They're reading at a third grade level when they're graduating high school, right? Um, instead of picking on these kids and going, wow, that we have the dumbest group of people growing up now. Why don't we figure out how to teach them in the ways that are brand new to them instead of yes. trying to force a hundred year old curriculum down their throats for I a world think, that no longer exists? I think that's right? the way it is with just everything in general. When you look at uh, mm. society too, I mean, there yeah, are basics is. to society, but the fact that uh, certain beliefs, certain uh, well, I'm just going to say beliefs in culture, uh, culture by today's standards from what it used to be to where it is now. I mean, it's, there are so many changes and people, they want to embrace the old and keep that alive, but it's not going to happen. People have changed. Uh, right. the divorce rate is a classic example of that where it, you know, I, my gosh, my mom was divorced back in 67 the first time and she was ostracized for it pretty much now, now people will go man your, your relationship has two or three problems you should get a divorce exactly <laughs> it's like holy shit that's yeah. pretty fast you know and and the same thing applies if you want to go to the religion standpoint is um look at how much change has happened and i don't mean uh, you know whatever religion you're in there are the orthodox people that are going to say, no, no, this is the way that I was raised. This is the way it will be. And this is how, where I will go. But in today's society, can they survive? No, it's impossible. Cause yeah. if you try to, if you try to teach your kids, what you think are like, whether it's religious or any of any of these older belief systems, maybe the ones you were raised under and you think, mm -hmm. okay, they worked for me. They worked for my family. I'm going to teach my kids this way. That's what I meant by generational change is yeah. you'd have to stop your children from existing in a modern world like the Amish to have any form of control over that. Because the moment that your kid gets out of the house and goes anywhere else on the planet Earth or most places, they're immediately going to be met with a large group of people that are going to be like, oh, you don't you don't do this. You don't do that. You're not engaged with this. You're not engaged with that because that's just the world we live in. Right. And they're going to feel left out of those things. What's so interesting about old fashioned beliefs, too, is it's like, well, I'm going to teach people how to, um, you know, these are my beliefs. So I'm going to indoctrinate my children into them, whether they're religious or whatever, not realizing 
that the world's moved on from those beliefs and that you're yeah. actually forcing mm -hmm. your child into an ostracized life that then they're going to feel not prepared for a modern day world of living in. It's right. better to instill common concrete beliefs that are like good beliefs on how to live your life, how to be happy. Like I think if people worked a lot more on teaching people how to be happy and maintain their happiness, instead of teaching them how to live based off of the principles, it's like, how do you find your happiness? How do you keep yourself in that zone more? It's not really right. something that's taught. So it's like change shows up and it's like immediately a bad thing because now we're moving away from something that we've been doing for a long time, right? I think, um, I think I agree, Matt. Change, because change is so important, but at the same time, having a foundation that you can build from that change is very important. So I agree that you have to be flexible, but at the same time, there's got to be a starting point that you need to learn from. You know, A plus B equals C. One plus one equals two. Two plus right. two equals four. But that those you need. But then as soon as you get beyond that, how does two plus two equals four integrate with the new uh, AI chip that's going to that's coming out in, you know, in the new in the new cell phones and in the new computers that are coming out? I mean, it's like, OK, yeah, that is a foundation of two plus two equals four. But oh, my gosh, this AI chip can do that. And. Yeah, it'll it'll add to well, Dad, go ahead and you were gonna say something. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> when we talk about belief systems, imagine this. Um, you know, we become who you hang around. All right. So even though Craig brought up that, you know, in the past, or maybe Matt did, you know, where the Berlin Wall was taken down. So now all of a sudden you everyone knows that you have a east and west uh Germany, right? If you've been there, and I have, it's like, um, it's bizarre how you can go into a high-tech city that's sort of like the border of the United States and Mexico. You know, you, you can, there's places like in San Antonio where you see all these skyscrapers, you're on a road, and then you look over here, and these are hills, and they got these little um, shacks made out of plywood. And it's like, and, and it's like LA. This, no, I'm yeah, you, you see this, <laughs> yeah, you, you see this in, in, um, in a lot of countries where you have the modern city and then not too far away from the modern city is it looks like people are the cavemen that, you know, they, they don't have electricity and they don't have running water. And, and, uh, one of the things that I, I love about this concept is we know there's a North and South Korea. And when you see it from the Google map, one's dark and one's light. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and there's just a border there. And there's a whole group of people that know <clears throat> not the same ideas and belief and excitement of change is, is South Korea has. And when you can see very, very like visual with your eyes, with your nose, with your ears, see the difference just in a line from one country that's one way and one country that's another, or one part of the city that's different than another. So you can't tell me <laughs> that the people that grow up in South Korea believe and have the same options as people do in North Korea. And the reason right. that I'm bringing this up is uh, in the podcast that I watch is he goes, why don't people understand that in the United States, that is the difference between the have and the have nots, is just who you're hanging around. So you can go into communities where it's loving and everyone's doing well and everyone's supporting each other. Everyone's up to date. Maybe a, a private school has, you know, they're taught when they come in as kindergartens how to use the internet and access resources. And then there's places that we already know that if you took a wrong way off the freeway in major cities, you can immediately end up in a place that you won't come back from. 
There, I was actually seeing, speaking on that, that's I was seeing that there's... crazy. You go, there's that's this not new... real in the United States. That happens in other places. No, yeah. that's freaking happening right here. But we don't see it as drastically. And man, I, I understand what you want to share, but we don't see it as drastically as in other countries. I remember going to the Philippines and you want to talk about a country that is just total... Uh, it, you can go from... Uh, I think the Makati district, which is incredible to a slum that is literally right in a ditch and it marks a dividing line and the slum yeah. is right down below. So yeah, it's not as, uh, as, as <clears throat> different, but oh boy, we don't see it as much, although it is here. So sorry, yeah. man. I didn't mean, I just wanted to, no, no. Throw... But even in the slums, what I thought was pretty hilarious, you know, is in the slums, <clears throat> you all of a sudden look on the side of the road and all you can see is black coax cables. And I mean, thousands of them. And you're like, what's that? Well, each individual that wants to steal cable or a high speed internet runs their own wire all the way from this. <laughs> and it just showed all these, you know, one piece of internet cable hanging out and it was just, everyone just keeps splicing into it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, humans are, humans are very resourceful and it's like the exact same thing that you said. It's like your, your group of people, if you were surrounded by people that that's how you live, then that's how you're going to live. And this is one of those very interesting things because you even bringing up North Korea is like a really good point. Um, you can see certain levels of indoctrination in different countries and how how little they're built to embrace change. Like, right. for instance, Russia currently is in this big situation because they're unwilling to they they have not built a country that embraces change enough. And so therefore, war is on the table again, only because their country is in a place where they have not embraced change long enough that it's it's not going to make it into the modern world. You know, right. and moving forward, they're predominantly built off oil. As you know, oil has been a resource that we've heavily used for a long time, and that's on its way out to a certain extent. So I think like you see people that just have been so indoctrinated into a certain thought or a certain belief. And then we all sit here as Americans and act like it's not different for us. Like we act like we're the awake ones and that they're the ones that are are crazy and indoctrinated, not realizing that um, we're all susceptible to it and we have our own versions of that. Um, the World Health Organization, regardless of what you think of them, did a world study on happiness um, last year, a census in general. And they found that the United States now ranks something, it, we're, we're in like 30 something place. I in, think it was 30. 30, 38th 30. in world happiness, right? So we're not even ranking in the top 20 of world happiness anymore. On the other hand, if you rank the United States just based off of people between the ages of 18 and 40, we rank 63rd. And if you if you took people and you did the United States 50 and above, we rank top 10. So it just goes to show that for the... For a certain group of people, the the people that are older, the United States experiment is working very well. And for the group that's younger, it just isn't. Now, right. where, where this teeter-totter is in the different direction is normally what ends up happening is the people that are older in years step down and then the younger generation is allowed to lead. But as people are getting older in years and predominantly voting more than the younger generation does. Now we have large amounts of countries that skew into the older years and have no concept on AI, have no concept on the internet, have no concept on any of these things with change. You know, we're still doing the war on drugs and marijuana as part of that in the United States. It blows my <laughs> fucking mind. It, it does because it's mm -hmm. like, it's such an aware thought and, 99% of people's heads, especially young people, that it shouldn't be that way. And yet the laws haven't changed. Um, it's just, it's so weird how little 
we're willing to embrace change. And it just goes to show that like, I, 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 know always that there's businesses that will crumble and new businesses they'll become the top top tier ones as ai grows just like open ai has simply because you, these behemoths are too big to like move you know right. like they can't embrace change embracing change to them requires 15 de departments of human beings agreeing and that's never going to happen Kodak. so exactly so you'll have a, a large and i think that's this country and i think that's in general a lot of countries right now is they're too large to move and it's going to cause like massive amounts of like discomfort through these these people that even want to embrace change because mm -hmm. if you want to embrace change like i do right you're still going to be in this position where you're living in a country that's unwilling to embrace that change right, right. so it's and like here, okay here's one of the things that i really loved on the positive of course you know everyone can go negative and positive for change right and the way that this guy explained it, which blew me away, is he said, <clears throat> if you look at everything right now that structures power, power, it's always around also money. It's the power and the control of money. And he says, so not when, I mean, not if, when, when new physics that is now coming out that AI is, is tapping into because a lot of people in America that were the best of the best, brightest scientists have decided that, you know, Hey, we've sort of much pretty much figured out what Albert Einstein is talking about. And I love this statement. This will be great for you guys. He said that he was in a conference of 300 of the top mathematicians physician uh, um people that deal with theoretical physics, physics. theoretical yeah. physicists he says there are people there from quantum and then he says you also have the people that are in science and he said he stood up in front of the room in a panel and this is all he said is there anybody in the room that can tell me what is gravity um we know how to measure it we know how to feel it but no one knows what gravity is. And he goes, you know why I know that? Is because some people still haven't figured out how to make things with no gravity. He says, if you understood the math and the physics to gravity, then you could do things to make things that have no gravity. It's just the opposite. It's the formula of like, hey, you know, this is light. How could I stop light? Put up a black curtain. <laughs> <laughs> He's going. So he goes to think that the brightest minds on the planet still can't tell you what gravity is. Now, here's what's exciting about AI is AI is now creating things with physics that human beings never thought of. But because AI is using them, we don't know how AI is doing the things that it's doing because we don't understand the physics that it figured out. Yeah, that's and kind goes, of where so, we're moving to now. And he goes, so think of this, what has power? Energy. The second that AI figures out how to give everybody power for free, energy for free, where's the money and the power go? He's going, this is gonna be fun to watch. What is another big power? He said, pharmaceutical. So when AI figures out, hey, you just have to change this, this with you, and you no longer need that medication, and your body will heal itself. So he says, look at the things that are the biggest power. If you looked at all the companies with the most money and the most power that is giving money to politicians, because that's how corrupt it is. What happens when that money dries up? Those greedy people that have been inviting their friends to the pig trough <laughs> because everybody knows that all sides are corrupt. And the only fight that's going on is the one that can get in power so they can bring the rest of their friends in. And then the lobbyists give them money and then they finance that to continue the trough going. He says the second that AI takes that pig trough away, 
the greedy people are not interested in playing the game of politics. And he said, the servants will show up. The people with real community in their hearts to serve mankind and to help mankind now get to use AI. And because no one's running and spending billions of dollars to win a race, now all of a sudden, those two power structures, when they change, then the people that are real true servants of the people will want to be the new politicians. And they're not going to be able to do it for money or to invite their friends to the pig trough. And he goes, so I'm very optimistic in the future that the greedy people and the power people won't want to be in politics and the real servants will show up. And he says, we'll see radical change and it'll be freaking awesome. And I went, wow, you know, cause he's going, mm -hmm. he goes, anybody that knows anything about the world they always have this one saying, I don't understand why these people do this stuff. And someone with some kind of intelligence says, follow the money. Follow the money. That's why they do that stuff. That's why they vote against or will delay voting in things that are great for the masses. Because they don't give a shit. They got to make sure they get reelected and they got to make sure that the people that paid them lobby, lo money that are lobbyists, that they, that they get taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I went, I've never heard that. So, you know, for people that are thinking change is bad, there's always a number of different perspectives to look at. No. Yeah. I, I love talking about that stuff, dad. Like I've shared um, where I think uh, it's going to go optimistically quite a bit because I, I'm, I'm all for a structure that doesn't serve a majority of people being destroyed regardless. And this is one of those interesting things why I brought up most young people aren't in a green, they don't have the patriotic part of the United States, even an inch, like it just doesn't exist in them. Right. Right. And so because of that generational change, there's a large amount of people that are going, hey, this American experiment actually hasn't been an experiment for a long time and it needs to go back to that. And why aren't yeah. we why aren't we trying new things anymore? Why are we just doing the same shit or going back to the same shit? And I right. think that that is where AI comes in, because exactly what you are saying with the physics, that's going to be a lot of things. And yeah. I, I, I think that's going to be a hard thing for humanity to grasp, not we already don't know how certain things work, how certain things run. And especially if you're not educated in those areas, right, then you might not even care to know how a television turns on and runs, right? Like it doesn't matter to you and that's fine, but there's going to become more and more questions that we have answers to, but we won't understand how the an we got to those answers. Right. And we, we might not even, yeah, we might not even understand the answers mm -hmm. in and of themselves. That's what Hitchhiker's yeah. Guide to the Galaxy plays around with is that even if we develop a machine that can answer some of these questions or go, oh, this is how you manipulate gravity. This is how you manipulate atoms and molecules. This is how you do these or those things. Or even discover, of course, new new ventures in these areas. Like dark, what is dark matter? How do we deal with that? How do we mm -hmm. go about that? And not only will we be like not understanding the, the, the questions that are being asked, we won't understand the answers and we won't understand how it works. Um, yeah. Just like 42. a dog doesn't understand. And that's <laughs> right. That's where it really gets weird because we're yeah. we're getting into this place where we almost are being entertained by something that we've created and being taken care of by something that we've created. But the reality is, is that th this technology is going to live on well past us and it's the next evolution of what we are. And a lot of people are having a hard time understanding that the next evolution because we've separated these things because humanity wants to be so special that right. that there's the organic and the synthetic right and this doesn't mean i'm anti-human i love humanity but we have to accept at some point that there's going to have to be some form of symbiotic relationship between our organic bodies and the synthetic aspects of technology in a way or, or else we're just going to be left behind like that's it's an just evolution is. is really what it is. And that's where like those it. things like Neuralink come in. Like we all go, holy shit, why would I want to chip in my brain? And it's like, 
Well, when a majority of humanity has chips in their brains and they think smarter than you and react smarter than you and are in more control of themselves than you, you're going to start to go, oh, shit, I kind of need to do that. And it'll just become normal. We'll have children and immediately chip them up. That's immediately what we'll do. And it sounds nuts. And people will go, control, blah, 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 this or that, this or that. And it's like they're already we, saying. Well, it's already been that way. Well, you know, like I, that's I think, what we're getting to is that AI has the ability to come in and go, hey, this this doesn't work. But as human beings, we're so susceptible to these things that we can ask, why doesn't it change? Or why do people keep voting for things that aren't in their best interest? And it's like because humans fall for that shit. I do, too. You know, well, what that even even to this day with all the data and everything that, you know, People still are in disbelief that, you know, Trump won an election, right? When you really allow people to honestly tell the truth, which mostly, you know, that's another thing we got to get a grip with, is that human beings are so destructive in the things we already talked about that that the, the worst thing that we do as human beings is this consistency of lying to ourselves you know, creating an alternate reality. It's like, I, I always make this funny thing up when, you know, I got hurt and I'm on workman's comp and I have no electricity and, and I'm broke as a joke. And a guy calls me up, hey, Bobby, how you doing? How did I respond? I fucking lied. Oh, I'm doing great. Why did I say that? Because I don't want to look less than in front of this guy, I don't really know that I met a couple of times. And see, until people want to really realize just how much we lie to ourselves, then we don't have the ability to change. We don't hmm. because we say everything's okay. Or it would be better if it went back to this. That's a lie. If you could immediately be put in a portal and transported back to, you know, what it was at back to the future. You know, if we could put you in a portal and take you back to the best day of your life, right after that day happened, you'd realize that you're still the person that is miserable as you were before. Because we look back at memories because we get to pick which one's negative and positive. You don't look at a week or a month or a year of your life in the past. Because if you did, you'd be like you are now. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. It's like we're constantly using our imagination to come up with fake shit that's not true. It's just what humans do. and so. You need to be in better shape. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm working out at the right time and what's the best exercise to do. And, you know, it's it's really hard to eat good. It's really hard to eat good. It, it's lie, 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 lie. Um, if I had more money, I would be happier. Bullshit. It's bullshit because you don't even know the definition of happiness. And so because we don't know these words and we're trying to communicate, everyone wants to believe that everyone's happier because I seen their damn thing on Instagram. Did you see how freaking happy they are? Look how happy they are. And then you see another one where a guy's going, I'm traveling to Tahiti and you see him take a picture of himself in the, you know, the window of the airplane and then they zoom out a little bit and it's a toilet seat and, and his office is cubicle. <laughs> and for a screensaver, he pulled up something blue, like with clouds and stuff. It's like, man, we're so deceptive. But yet we want to fake ourselves out that we're honest and we have integrity and we have character and we're not procrastinators. See, it's like, so when AI comes, it's going to go, you're lying to yourself. You know you are. And this is easy to do. I'll create a schedule for you. 
I'll show you how to hire someone to prepare your meals. It's like, oh no, oh no. The excuses that- are being taken away. <laughs> so now when you get all the excuses taken away, now we get to deal with the who we really are. And so I know we've been talking about some really incredible change, but how about the whole concept of you changing the way you feel about yourself? I seen this post today and I'm going to pause as I say the post. You ready? <clears throat> if I ask you right now, every one of you, if I ask you all to write a list of reasons why your life is not going right, I want you to think about four or five. Go. Okay. Now look at your list. I bet you you didn't put your freaking name on it. (laughs) 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 The government, my boss, my spouse, my girlfriend is like my parents. You write this whole list of stuff and you don't put your name on it. Nice. <laughs> that that's the ultimate lie right there. No, yeah, I I that's one of those <laughs> funny ones because like I feel like to a certain extent taking personal responsibility is like one of those life lessons that the sooner you learn it, the easier your life becomes because then you're now actually in control of the way that it's going. You know? Like I I think I'm always going to be on board with the thought that like you you should only focus on the things that you can control, right? Like that's such a valuable lesson to just not force yourself into the place of thinking constantly about shit that you can't control. Because the more that you live in that place, the more like frantic you're going to be. And you're definitely not going to be in a place where you're going to embrace change in your own life if you're constantly worrying about it coming. You know, you're like, all that change is coming. Like I'm waiting for it, right? And and it just always surprises me how I, even as a human being, will still loop back into that pattern on occasion. And it's just a We're constant human. reminder. We're it's human. a constant reminder that I do it. Yeah, that that's why it's good to have a community or people around you that can say, hey, listen, you're like shifting back into that state, right? Um, and and to pull you out of it and to get you to continue to embrace change and, and to embrace the changes in your own life. But that absolutely, Dad, like you were saying, comes from the place of personal responsibility. Like that even the thoughts that bother you about the things that other people did are your responsibility. Yeah. They're not going to show up and fix those mm-hmm. thoughts even if they said, I'm sorry. That's not going to change the way that it, it it's not going to change the way you trust them. It's not going to change the way that you support they support you or you support them or how you feel about that. All of that is your decision. And the moment that you realize that you're in such control of your own thoughts and decisions, um, it's like a breath of fresh air, but it's always yeah. constantly that thing where you have to remind yourself that you are. It's not like when none of us are, are Buddhist monks to the point where we can go, oh, this, let that go. Oh, this, let that go. Yeah. That takes discipline, like a lot of dis- mental discipline to let things go that quickly. And I think some things are obviously going to take a while for you to let go. You know, the acceptance that you as a human being, your worth is not what you create or what you're you're responsible for, but your impact as a human being on the others around you. And that (laughs) is that shift is probably going to be like the largest lifestyle shift that humanity is going to have to get used to with AI is that the competitiveness in us is has been so ingrained that we really have had even more of a harder time with social media existing in supporting one another in success and supporting others and change even if it's change we don't accept in ourselves or don't like in ourselves it's such like a hard thing for us to do to embrace that and i think like it's just going to become so commonplace and be so forced upon you because you're really not going to have other things to do but figure that out like If you're trying to compete against somebody else um, at this point, odds are it's like a social thing more than anything. Exactly what you said, Dad. Financially, it's still your, it's looks still wise. Your perception, it's still your perception in your mind 
that everyone is doing better than you, that everyone's happier than you. Or because some people think the this, opposite, right? Yeah. They think I, everybody's I, below them. <laughs> yeah. When I read the so. true, true. Um, when I read this and it said, why, why aren't you on the list? And, and I want, you know, Craig to, 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 I, cause it, I could see how much of effect it, it went on him. It's like, you know, you got these two groups of people, like you said, Matt, that, that they lie to themselves so much that they're totally in a, they're totally in a fabricated hallucination of who they are and what they're doing. But yet there's evidence in every area of their life that their lives are messed up. You know, they're, you know, and then you got the other people that maybe the very first thing they would put on this list would be them. And these are people that won't cut themselves any slack. They're mm -hmm. beating themselves up 24 hours a day. They're and there's always, yeah, there's yeah. always, if it, all it takes is looking back and like doing the therapy work or doing the reflective work to realize where that comes from. Like, yeah, no, no child I think is born to, to be that way. Now there's some people oh. that do it worse than others, but most of the time it, it has so much to do with upbringing exactly where we're going back to the people that you were, you were surrounded by. Did they judge themselves a lot? Did they blame themselves a lot? Or did they blame you a lot? Did they judge you a lot? Because odds are those are ingrained thoughts in you as you grew that you're going to have to work hard to get rid of because it's just not. And still, you know, like I'm not I'm not necessarily in a place where I judge myself. I think most of the time my judgment tends to be around what I'm I, I know that I'm capable. So it's not like I'm judging what I am. I'm more judging what I know I'm capable of and what I'm not doing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But that in and of itself is an illusion. It's an illusion to get yourself to do more. And I've l realized right. that that if I magically believe that I'm capable of more then maybe I am, you know what I'm saying? And I think going back even to what you were saying, dad, how certain people live in misery because of those things, there's certain people that live in such a happy reality distortion field that you could shoot as many arrows at it as you want. And they don't give a shit. They're like, my life's fucking great. I don't care what you, don't what misery you're like living that. in. Your misery is not going to affect my, my life or what I'm doing because I'm fully aware that that's a possibility. And so I, I make sure to remove myself from it. And people yeah. don't really like, I don't know, there's certain aspects of us, myself included, that also want to save people. Dad, I know you've struggled with this, where it's like, you see people, Craig, I'm sure you have too, where you see people struggling and you, you're you like, here's the solution for that. And I oh, think as God, men, yes. especially we're that way. But it's like, here's something we could solve it. Here's how you solve it. Why won't they solve it? Why won't they solve it? And it's like, why why not... do we have these two different branches of government right now? Uh, one that is willing to solve and the other one is no, 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 no. We can't. We I can't think they're both that. unwilling to solve. Well, I was gonna, true. I but was gonna, let's just say that I was one is say, more. Craig, what, what issue are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends on what yeah, side it depends the on what you want to solve. You're right. You're you're absolutely right. You know, it, yeah. it's uh, we don't give ourselves enough credit to move forward because of the way that things are and people like the way that things are and they don't like change. So why should I move forward when I like where I'm at right now? And the people who are moving forward are like, no, that was yesterday's news. That was yesterday. I need yeah. to, you know, I need to move forward because here is where I see myself. But the people that are back here are going like, no, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And the embrace is not there for the people that are back here. While the people that are moving forward, they're not saying, okay, you know what? We'll take baby steps together. Let's go. They're trying. I mean, some people do try that and right. that would be the absolute progress, but you've got these people that are on this side and the other side. And it's like, they don't understand that they need to all go together mm -hmm. yeah, in order for I, everything to I, benefit. And of course I'm being altruistic when I say that right. too. Um, and, and knowing that. So it's, it, it is one of those, you know, duopoly plays that's taking place yeah. and th where we are in government in today here in the United States is playing out just like that right, right. now. 
Yeah, it, yep. it is. It's one of those things that, um, you know, there's, uh, what is it? Is I, It's the 48 Laws of Power, mm-hmm. Matt, you know, that, yep. that book. And Robert you know, Green. When you, yeah, when you really start, when you start really realizing what motivates people, truly, truly motivates them. Um, you really find the true character of an individual when those are no longer there. It goes back to Mr. Rogers, where his mom said, always look for the helpers. Because right. in this world, we can still see these people that are doing things. And your mind goes, wow, that is a gifted, special person. Right. You know, where, where you know, they took a path less followed. And um, even, Matt, did you tell me about this three body problem? Yeah. Did you, did you, yeah. And what I, I, see, I still haven't yeah. seen it. So don't spoil yeah. it for anybody. Well, what I just love about this, ab- about this is one of the smartest people in the movie. Um, everybody wondered where she went. And I mean, she is without a doubt the smartest person with physics that's on the planet at the time. And so they were going, where's so-and-so? And immediately you seen her like in this village and she had this thing that was looked about this size and she figured out how to take something and screw it on every well that when the water came out, it didn't drop, didn't drop a uh, uh, water pressure, and it and it was pure clean water that had the nutrients in it, the minerals in it, and also everything it needed to make human life. And so she found out that by putting certain things into the water, that it would allow our body to heal itself. So she not only was cleaning up the water for these people. But she said in a matter of two weeks, everyone that has, has this problem, this infection, this disease, whatever, she said in less than a week, everyone will be fine. Don't worry about it. So to be that smart without giving the movie away, and as soon as she was able to get away from it and unplug, she's still using all her brilliance to serve mankind. Well, I think like that's one of the and things you know, Oppenheimer of really people, struggled with. Yeah, a lot of these people are unheard of. They're they're but they're probably unheard of because they don't seek any fame and fortune for wanting Well, to they know that that's life. like one of the biggest biggest issues of humanity. Like I think one of the hardest things to realize is that those things are actually like goalposts that are put in front of you and told to you constantly that they're important when they're really not. Yeah, they're really right. not. And they're used to like get you in a place, in my opinion, where you're working towards things that are maybe not your own because of maybe the fame that will come from it, the fortune that will come from it, because you think that that will give you some type of legacy or significance. Um, I, I don't think that exists. Like, I really don't. And to think of the world moving forward with AI, to think any human ha- will have any forms of significance in the future um outside of on other human beings like i it's an interesting thought to think about because it's like space travel probably won't be invented by us anymore the next version of energy won't be invented by us the next version of computers won't be invented by us so a lot of the things that will be invented in the future including what you're talking about with the three body problem won't be human invention right there will be it'll be machine invention now because that's the case, I think that there's going to be a large amount of people, just like you're talking about, that w- that are already fully aware that serving humanity is their main goal. And there's lots of these people that work in SpaceX, Tesla, a lot of these companies that are changing the world and doing things. It's just that they have someone like Elon Musk that wants to take credit for all of it. And therefore, that's why that person exists. Right. right? And I think that's one of the biggest fears even of Elon's life is his significance now is yeah. he wanted to be the man that put everyone on Mars and he's now realized that's not going to happen. His <laughs> biggest goal in life, mm-hmm. what he wanted to work towards and build towards sustainable energy and, and putting humanity in space will not have his name next to it anymore. It'll have AI. 
AI will do those things better yeah. than him and better than any human being. And so now you have a lot of these people that are fame driven, fortune driven, that are looking right. at their legacies crumble in front of them because they know Tesla is not going to be remembered at all in 50 years. No right. one will remember them. It won't matter. Right. And so now we're all sitting here and we're going, let's embrace change and stuff. And what does change look like for you? I've you if you guys have seen me even on the last couple of calls, my mind has changed significantly with these thoughts, yeah. because when you start to embrace the fact that all of this now for us as human beings is meaningless, other than if you give something to it, and that's based off of how you feel of what you want your life to be, whether it's affecting and helping other human beings or changing their life, even if it's one person. Right. Right. And so like, I'm like, now in a place where I, I think my goal on this planet is to just help other people be creative, inspire them to be creative. Like I'm trying to do mm -hmm. for myself. That's yeah. kind of the only thing that I can do. And to think that I'm going to have any forms of legacy off inspiring those people that it's going to live off me generations is just, it's, it's a crazy thought to think, you know? Well, you know, that goes back to a, a thought that, um, you know, I, again, watching podcasts, I think is just, so interesting to me because you get to see the brightest minds, you know, actually uh, push the limits of thinking. Like there was one thing that that um, and I don't mind saying his name, name and, and and please don't be one of those individuals that know everything and tell me not to listen to him uh, because I know you don't know. So, you know, it's this Eric Weinstein. Right. So he, he talked about how fast his life took off with this concept of having portals. And, and he goes, I, I loved his story and you guys will know why, you know, because he grew up and he was dyslexic. So like me, you know, understanding common sense and numbers and, and geometry and stuff that I use to set up race cars, you know, I could, I can see this stuff. Numbers for me is the most comfortable place I can be in, but yet I was graded um, and he went to college like I did. And it was so funny that he said, you know, I immediately seeked out people that had difficulties with science and math and that were Val Victorians of their high school. And, and I would do things that they were bad at and they would do things for me that I was bad at. And it is funny that you find these certain people that go to college and they immediately seek out each other. And, the, what he used as far as an analogy is, you know, we talk about mutants, right? Is that, you know, people that are flat out mutants have special powers in other arenas. <laughs> so he says, mutants love other mutants. And he says, so they form together knowing that all of them become a part of one. And so what he said that was just so amazing for him is that um, because he's good at math, he says, I break down portals. And he says, portal is what Craig talked about, where you make something so simplistic that when everyone looks at it, they go, oh, my God, I can do it. So he asked for a guitar and he had a coffee mug. Right. And he goes, if anyone's ever tried to play guitar. He says, here's the first place that you'll stop is not only trying to get your four fingers in the right place, but if you don't press it hard enough against the frets, it doesn't have the right sound. <laughs> and it right? hurts. <laughs> so this takes practice yeah. plus having your fingers bleed plus, you know, eventually building calluses on your fingers. Mm -hmm. And he goes, so <clears throat> what if I told you that with this guitar, that every er, virtually millions of songs are based off four chords. And you can play any song with three strings. So he grabs the coffee mug and he puts it against the, you know, the, 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 um, the arm or the whatever, the guitar, you know, mm -hmm. I know I'm using the wrong language. And then he just started moving this coffee mug pressed against it because it's hard enough. It pushes it against the frets. And he started playing just a couple of strings and he did it. You knew the song. And then he did it in a different song. 
and you knew the song. And he did it another one. He says, so out of the million songs that use these four chords in different sequences with these three strings, you now can play your favorite song just because I taught you this trick. So now I give you a guitar, you use the coffee mug, and you just hit these three strings and you hear you creating music, bam. He said, you just went through a portal because you will feel that you created something. So now instead of thinking, I'll never be able to play. I can't, I don't have any rhythm. I couldn't carry a tune if it had a handle on it. All this <laughs> defeating shit that we say about ourselves. That's just not me. And he says, my goal for all the children in the world that know you're not like everybody else. You're a mutant. My goal is to teach you how to find a portal. And he says, anything that you want in life, I know because I'm a PhD in mathematics from Harvard, I know everything has to do with numbers. And I don't need you to believe it. And he says, so if I can show you what, from my world, my portal, how to do something that you didn't think you could. And he brought up language. He brought up a lot of stuff. And he goes, you, you allow, he says, you find people that I've given up that don't have any hope. And you show them a little portal that they can put their heads through. Wham. He said, you'll just see yep. a, a child just launch itself. I and see adults yeah. do that with AI all the time. Uh -huh. I, yep. that, that's the thing is like nowadays I'm seeing that being reawoken and a, a lot of the people that are part of imaginators and stuff, because yeah. as people get in there, they're being reintroduced to their creativity. And similarly, like teaching how to play those chords, it's like, Hey, actually that song that's been in your head, that tune AI can help you make that. Now you, you yeah. can make that, that, that yeah, shot are... or that short that you wanted to make that film or that book. AI can help you make that, right? Watch, so. Watching one, watching all the people and imaginators in the inner circle create stuff that's better than anything they've ever seen posted on a social media. And seeing their faces yeah. light up as they create it. We've seen that with yeah. several of the people that are imaginators. And it's it's incredible the fact that they can use different things. And I think to go back to what you were saying, Robert, it's also in their perception. And uh, I think part of like the neuro-linguistic programming that's out there in, okay, what do, what does Matt, what is, what is easy for Matt to understand? Is he more tactile where you may be more, uh, visual where right. I may be more sensory, uh, in, in, you know, uh, emotional. I mean, it just, it's also interesting to, uh, to go through, because how we interpret that, and of course, that's where everybody gets their own little gift, I guess, in what well, Bob, it is they do in life. We watched Bob Johnson, that's part of our inner circle and imaginators. And to think that he never, ever, ever, ever had the concept that if he took the time to connect with another human being, he would get different responses. Uh, He's ruined. <laughs> so, you know, we keep looking for shortcuts. We keep looking for, you know, we know things that we should do and we don't do them. But like, that's the definition of insanity, right? You know, consistently doing things the same way, expecting a different result. You know, it's interesting. Sudden, go ahead. Yeah, dad. Well, what, what you're talking about even is this like, why uh, the first thing that came to my mind when you shared that is is why would we do that to ourselves why would i why would we try to take shortcuts around understanding ourselves like uh, because to and engage with another person the reason that it's scary for a majority of people is why rejection rejection uh, there i don't want to be seen a certain way mm. right so so normally you don't want to talk to people because of you right and yet you're willing to create a million things that are harder to do and to learn, to circle around doing the one thing that would not only benefit 
you as a person, but benefit the people around you. Right. Great, and I mean, I've, I'm still dealing with this and working on this. Yeah, yeah. It's such a huge thing because it's like, I will try to figure out ways to not have to communicate with people and AI solves a lot of these problems. And I'm going to watch that happen for more people too. But it's like, great. I don't have to work with a copywriter now. I just work with G GPT. That that's excellent. You know, I don't have to work with a web designer or any of these people, but on the same hand, I think if we don't realize the damage that that's doing to us in a communicative way with ourselves and others that right. like solutions to problems sometimes are not a good thing. Sometimes going through a certain thing will make you better at what you do. Believe it or not, this is even something that I, I was just shitting on Elon Musk. But one of the things that I've heard that he does in his businesses that no one else really does is he's on the floor talking to the people that work in the business way more than he's talking to the corporate people. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's a massive difference in the way to run a company like he, in he, today's day he, and age. He so. recently, uh, I seen something with Elon Musk just recently, and I don't know the right numbers, but I know the last number. So I think it was like either 30 or $40 million that it costs for fuel uh, to take the Starship up just go up and the main main part with the 33 engines jesus you know <laughs> remember the space shuttle you know it it had two big boosters two two big motors one on the left and one on the right and now you see the starship go up and it's got 33 motors i mean 33 thrusts that are coming out the back and one of the motors are more powerful than the two that ran the space shuttle Right. And he's got 33 of those. And so he says, when you launch it to get out of the orbit, you know, where they're, they'll figure out the next thing. I, I believe the number was somewhere around 43 or $45 million that it takes to fuel it. And a reporter came to him on uh, SpaceX's lot. And while he was showing the employees and we're doing this and he, he's talking all about this. And then this guy said to him, you know, why don't, why, why don't you do this, this, and this with the fuel? And you could just see Elon Musk go. Wow. A reporter. Yeah. And he said that, <clears throat> that that's what they did to get the last starship into space so fast without it blowing up. And he says, right now, the geometric progression of us figuring out what I heard from that one guy that we'll be able to refuel the starship for a million dollars. One idea yeah. changes $39 million. But that's, it, I was just that's exactly say, what much... Steve Jobs was good at too, is that, yeah. The re Reduce like a lot of people don't want to, right. They want to talk to less people. So their goal sometimes as CEOs, um, and these other companies, I'm not talking about Elon is to talk to the higher ups and then have them whisper down the lane, the information through the departments to get things done. When you see great leaders like these people, regardless of what you think of them ethically, they're great leaders. Uh, show up and have conversations with the people that are actually making the shit, not the people that are funding it. It's right. like, and that's one of the things that I heard the, the guy was like, he came onto the floor and Tesla and we needed this new thing for the batteries. It was 45 million and, or similar. It was like really expensive. And to him, he's like, okay, I'll go talk to corporate. We'll get it done. And they're like, well, yeah, but won't that be a big deal or whatever with those guys? And he's like, those guys are here to serve you guys, not to serve, not the other yeah. way around. Those dudes are supposed to make sure that the money's in the spots it's in so we can make things. Right. That's why they're, I hire them. If they weren't doing that job, they're not doing the right job. And on the other hand, in every other corporation, it's structured the opposite. It's like, we'll lay people off that just did all the work because the stock then will go up for the people that are, are shareholders. That's better, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing all those tech companies do that. So it's well, like, never well, mind doing the right thing for the right reason. Right. <clears throat> um, well, you, you know, it's not like he does it ethically. It's just smarter. Well, <laughs> right? it, it, well, not just smarter, but also just from the standpoint of 
earning money, which is in a sense, the, the crux of a lot of this, it's like, it doesn't matter whether it's smarter or not. Does it make money? How many projects, how many things that are, have been created have been tabled because it, it, even though, yes, it makes sense. It's in the back. It's it, they don't want I to mean, deal with it. Only, only, only technological, massive technological innovations, cures for diseases, all different kinds of things. Right. Like yeah. you could go infinite with that because there's so many you, things that exactly I lack always of think, funding didn't go anywhere. It just lack of marketing, me, I should say. Well, not only that, lack of marketing and lack of uh, the desire to actually bring it out because it may kill you or it may ruin your company. Um, I always look at when what we're talking about, I always think of that end scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. They've got the Ark. Where do they put it? In the at, in the very end of the movie, you see some guy, it's boxed up, stamp on it, push it into this warehouse. Right. It is just got enormous amounts of things. And all it is is just a warehouse. It's like, uh, no, I don't think we are quite ready to embrace this i don't think this is something i mean I, honestly that's what somebody open AI has is made right that now. decision yeah. well yeah exactly ai is now out of right. the box and that's different but i mean a lot of the mentality of people right now is like uh you know how many good things have people created over the years to benefit mankind to benefit themselves that don't hurt others that get shut off well there's right i feel like that's that's the what i loved about oppenheimer in the story of Oppenheimer is um, majority of the time, the best, the world's best inventions that do the most good are also capable of doing the most bad at the same time. Yeah. And it's our acceptance of those things and moving forward that makes us very unique. Uh, I I'm think me, we're me. willing to accept the bad to a certain right. extent for the good. And I brought this up with the internet and a lot of things, right? Like oh, yeah. someone will go, what about AI killing us all? And it's like, yeah, the internet's done quite a number on us. If you think of all the bad shit it's done. But it's infinite, right? The people that have been taken yeah. advantage of, the people have been hurt because of the internet. The people that have lost their families or been killed or things because of the internet is massive. And yet to have it not exist would be a huge loss to all right. of us. So, Well, no yeah. one ever talks about, you know, we don't want to bring this up because it's all these things that we want to lie to ourselves. But no one wants to really truly understand how many people are killed a year in car accidents. Isn't it funny that we just do not want to know that number? Right. But, you know, how many programs do you see? If you watch any news, it's like people are, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are dying from car accidents. But it's like, let's not talk about that part. Let's talk about the part where they're fun to drive and we actually can get to point A to point B. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. And the other one is these little things that we keep again lying about or lying to ourselves. If you ever go to Google and search up how many people die a year from wrong prescribed prescriptions, because sometimes they put them together. And each individual knows that we got different DNA and sometimes responses from even the right drug that they thought they would use in combinations with other drugs kills hundreds of thousands of people a year. Hundreds of thousands. But yet people want to go, yeah, but but it, it does so much better. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's like that thing that we see commonly, Matt and Craig, that are brought up in movies about the greater good. You know what I mean? We're I was just going to say the for the benefit we're, we're of society versus Yeah, we're constantly struggling with the greater good that that automobiles um are good, but they kill hundreds of thousands of people a year just in the United States. I mean, and then, uh, you know, yeah. alcohol, alcohol, come on. You know, alcohol's good. You know what I mean? It, 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 but it kills hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think one of the most interesting things about the United States and in general is like the whole uh, the whole aspect that like you get to live your life the way that you want to, to a certain extent, if like it within reason. And I think mm -hmm. w what's so interesting is the policing of what you can and cannot do to yourself 
is one of those areas that is kind of sketchy because here's the thing, right? Like me and Hannah were talking about this the other day and it's a deep subject. So it's going to get dark for a moment, but it's interesting. Okay. Um, suicide, right? So suicide sits in a place where you, you can say, yes, a person can decide with what they want to do with their own lives, right? If they don't want to be here anymore, they're like, Hey, this isn't for me. And they want to be done with it. That is their decision. Now it impacts all the people around them, right? In a severe way, in a negative way. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still their decision just as much as it is to do drugs or anything. On the other right. hand, on the other hand, we're bull, we're all, or a decent amount of us are fully aware that the people that tend to commit suicide mentally have deficiencies in some areas. And if you took their brain afterwards and looked at it, you'd realize that. And I've experienced this stuff myself where I've had suicidal thoughts and it's the deficiencies in my brain that was causing that more than it was my situation. A chemical right? imbalance. A chemical so imbalance. now you have to ask that, that other opposite end of the question. Should they have the ability to do that and should we be okay with that even if the the mind is the one doing it and not the 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 brain, the person. It's the body that's right. making the decision, but not the not the consciousness, not the mind. Mm -hmm. And it's really that's like a weird so thing to think about because you're like, okay, we can make all these preventatives, but on the other right. hand, people should be able to do what they want, right? But then on the other hand, not that. Yeah. But on the other hand, that only is about them. But on the other hand, it's not because it affects other people. <laughs> so it's like, it's such a weird thing, right? Because it's not like murder or these other things that affect other people in a negative way. Suicide sits in this weird spot where you're making a decision to do something yourself to yourself. And the, the negative aspects of it affect you zero. You're not here anymore. But yet well, we feel Matt a certain are... way about it. And if you look in different societies, I'll finish this thought so it doesn't, it's not as dark, right? If you look right. in different societies, the way that I'm not advocating, by the way, for suicide, uh, but if you look in different societies in the past, it was looked at differently than it is now. Yeah. And so those groups of people grew up in a society where maybe that was the thing that you did at the end of your life. The, the decision right. to take your own life was something of pride in certain Native areas. Indians. Native Indians. In certain Indians. areas. You yeah. just take your shit, you walk off into the desert and you die. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's suicide because you know you're going to die by doing that. So that's yeah. a mental decision to swim out in the ocean and drown. And yet, yeah. in those groups of people, they would all have a big party and say goodbye. And that was the last time they saw them and they went back to nature. They didn't see Native that Indians as a still, as a negative. They saw that as a positive. It's such a weird right. thought, you guys. And there are and people yet, that are embracing that today. Some some people are, especially. I mean, if assisted they suicide is no. Grown. In yeah, certain especially countries. if they've grown in themselves to say, okay, they're maybe too ill and there's just what no I mean. cure. Yeah. yeah. And it's like well, ending your life in dignity. Go ahead, Robert. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, I, Matt, thank you for bringing that up. I, I didn't think it was dark as you thought it would be, but it, it I just think it's a heavy is, subject. So I just want to preface it. it, it pretty, with that. Um, when Matt and I met Dr. Amen, you know what I mean? Uh, I love people that can figure out these little things again. If you can explain it to a six-year-old, you know, you get it right away. And this is what Dr. Amon said to, to Matt and I uh, when we got our brain scanned by him. And, and the very first thing that he said, don't you find it interesting that you fall down? And when you fall down, you found out that you sprained or broke something. And it gave you so much pain that everyone knows what the next move is. You got to go to ER. We, we got to go right. to the hospital. Um, if you have a break in the brain, you just need to shut up and get over it. Yeah, exactly. That's one of those what's really wrong with weird you? What, What's wrong with you? Why don't you think something positive? You know, it's like you would never say that to somebody that's got a bone sticking out of there. I love the Yeah, I love the aspect of <laughs> oh that too, gosh, yeah, because yeah. it works so well with like even the concept of a motor, right? Like if you're yeah. trying to start a motor and you didn't maintain it and take care of it, it wouldn't start it and it would break down. Now, if yeah. the motor doesn't work, car ain't fucking going anywhere, yeah. right? 
And yet we do, we don't look at that top down approach to the brain and the mind and go, if this motor doesn't work, this shit ain't going anywhere. Right. It, if anything, so like gotta, stress is so the number just, one killer of people like heart disease and stress is, yeah. is a leading cause of death. And that normally comes from those things, bad, poor mental health, bad, poor mental health can take years off your life, decades off your oh, life. Absolutely. Oh. Cause well, the body feels it right. It can make you end your life. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so like why we all, you know, argue with this, but it, it is funny to see that, you know, with all the mass shootings that happen, that, that, that is the go-to now. And it's easy to go to it when you see a, a, a young mother that has a four or five year old and she takes a gun and walks into a church while she's hanging on to her child's hand. It's pretty easy to go, where in the hell was her head? But yet we're looked at as being something wrong with us and something weak. The thing that we consistently see is that these people were in the best way they knew how, not all, but I would say that the majority of people are just screaming for help. They, they had purposely thought of and created every reason to not look like an average human being. And no one was there to help them. You know, who writes stuff on the internet about what they're going to do? And everyone's like, hey, they're just having a bad day. <laughs> it's like, yeah. man, but <clears throat> it's not only that people are shouting out for help and crying for help, it's like no one knows how to help them. I, I've been there in my life. Yeah, I've been in, my, in there in my life where people that I love more than anything in the world, Matt being one of them. And there's things that places that Matt's been in in his life where I didn't know how to help him. Right. I knew I personally couldn't help him. But it didn't take me long to do my research with the little signs that he gave me up to that point, knowing immediately what I needed to do. And it, it it's just get him in front of other people other than me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and that's a huge part of it. I think that's where it's lost in a lot of people is that they see people struggling with certain things mentally and they either try to help them with their own stuff or, or they just go, Oh, it's not my problem. But like the reality is, is that, just like you said, taking care of the brain is like such an important part and the amount of people that we do lose because the, the interesting thing is, is mental health issues tend to skew with intelligence and, and things. The more, this is why you'll see certain people like Howard Hughes or certain people that deal with a bunch of shit mentally. Like I just saw this interview with Elon Musk and this person thought it was totally fine to like, talk to him about what he takes for his own depression right which is fine to talk yeah. about but it, he brought it up don lemon he brought it up in a way to almost be like oh you use this as a crutch and it's that same bullshit that i fucking it's like do you know that what this guy probably deals with on his shoulders on a day-to-day -day basis and you're you're calling him out mm -hmm. for using something that helps with that like that it's interesting bullshit. the way that we perceive it because we 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 want people to be superhuman in some way. So it's like, oh, you know, I'm natural. I'm all natural. I'm, I'm just doing life all natural. And that's the way that it is. And it's like, I don't think anybody does life that way. Regardless no. if you're on something or not, there's things that we all utilize and social media being one of the largest ones now to feel better, right? So yeah. uh, if you don't think you're scrolling constantly because you feel better, or you don't grab your phone immediately in the morning because it makes <laughs> you feel better. You're wrong. You that's, that's yeah. the reason you grab it first. So what yeah. I've, what I've learned to do Matt from others, because I didn't know that I didn't know about a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, what, what gives me joy now is when I get up in the morning and I log into my online banking, it's, 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 <laughs> See, but you come yeah. from a you come from a totally different experience than I do because you come right. from an experience of poverty. You come from an experience of having to develop those things. So there's always I 
that's the thing. The animal part of your brain is going to be very hard to overcome the aspect that goes, oh, I've learned these things for survival. And this makes me feel like I'm surviving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that's true. Everybody is a a sum of their own experiences. Absolutely. Craig. And, and, and where Robert, like you were just pointing out, Matt, where Robert has gone through the poverty, has built himself up. You haven't Matt, and you've yeah. been, you've experienced not that poverty, but uh, you've experienced other things. Don't get me wrong, but that's where you know we all have the unique different differentials of our experiences to so many different things. And yeah, you know, you that's may not. A, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, Craig. Yeah. That's no. Uh, it's just. I think it's why a lot of us have a really hard time connecting with one another is that we just tend yes. to try to connect on our own level instead of trying to understand them as who they are. Exactly. And that's something that like I've learned and it's like someone's dealing with shit and you've dealt with it. One of the biggest mistakes I've made in my life and talking to other people is going, I get and understand what you're going through. Such bullshit. Cause we don't yeah. know that. No, you don't you know, know to what here and say that point in time, yeah. even though you may have experienced, let's say, depression yeah but their depression is totally different from yeah when you look at the account dad and the way that you feel about it yeah is is totally Mm -hmm. significant to you in a way that it's not to me or to others that may not have been in that situation and yet yeah exactly and yet there will still be people that will come to you and go why do you do that i don't understand why you do that they're trying well, to understand when, your experience through their own, and they're trying to go. I wouldn't do that. Well, so what is wrong with you, Robert? You uh, you shared the the whole Bobby versus Robert right. experience well, with your friend. He was, yeah, even going through right now, you know, as we're talking, <clears throat> the reason that you see a banner here, where you can go to my YouTube channel and and other videos, see my accolades behind me, is because I personally know with AI coming that I don't want, I will not have AI catch me sideways and me not knowing where to go to survive. So when you, the the positive of everything that bad happened to me, making me who I am, I now get get to pass that on to Kyle and and, uh, Matt. And they're going like, dad, we need to find something that can give you the happiness and the challenge and the goals and and imagination that ha- has nothing to do with money. You know, so mm-hmm. Matt keeps saying, you know, Dad, where are you going to be in three years? What do you want to be known for? Mm-hmm. And there was a so you know what happened to me is I always t- tell people this is like when I got hurt on the job of being a mechanic. And then realized through a couple of people's voices that my identity is not what it used to be. None of it. None of it. So all of a sudden, you know, you still see people all over the world. What do you do for a living? I'm a mechanic. You you don't hear people go, I live for a living. Or I, I, um, I give for a living. I, you know, it's, it's a different thing. And so that's the that's a bonus side of me doing what I did to help Matt and Kyle with the next generation that are going, Dad, we, we need to keep you motivated. We need to keep you inspired. It needs to be about something else. And the one thing that um, uh, that I've loved with all the stuff that I've been watching is when people get freaked out about AI. And this goes back to imagination. And I heard this guy goes, so people are going to be irrelevant. And he goes, no, because AI can never read my mind. Yeah. And so I need to be using my mind in other creative (laughs) ways. Now, does that mean that through my creation of whatever I use, I can then give it to AI and it can take it to where it needs to go? But as long as AI is not reading my mind, then I just need my mind to be in a positive imaginational place 
and allow AI as this thing that can assist me to make that happen that contributes to millions, if not billions of people. It's like, yeah, it, it, so, it right. That's yeah, so true. So now, the significance of that. Yeah. So now, now we can build something that helps people feel like they're a part of a community and bring that creativity, imagination out to them to allow them to be able to focus on things that, you know, like Shark Tank. I'll, I, you know, I talked about the, the, um, when I was talking about the coffee cup on the guitar neck, ah, that came back. So, so right away, I remember, oh my God, I was telling that story and there was a guy on Shark Tank and, and they funded it. But this guy said, how many people like playing guitars? And everybody said, no. And it was called the, uh, I think it was called the guitar buddy. It was, and it was this, it, it was a plastic thing that goes on to the neck of the uh, um, guitar and you got four fingers and there's four little notches in the plastic thing. And this is a chord. This is a chord. This is a chord. This is a chord. So now you're moving. You're, you're looking great. <laughs> Wow. There's a there's I, but this there's guitars of, that actually do that for you now too, yeah. which is pretty interesting. Or yeah. even okay, you if you want to go to the technology side, you have these people that have these little boxes that you can record segments and create, uh, you know, whole musical numbers. I the first time I saw one of those, this guy was on stage with a just a single guitar. It was built like. You ever seen one of those double guitars where it's a bass on the bottom mm -hmm. and a regular guitar on the top? So he had that. It was a multi-string on the top and just a basic bass on the bottom. So he starts playing a foundation, pushes a button on a foot pedal that's recorded, plays something different. It adds layers. It mm -hmm. adds more layers. It adds more layers. There's a guy on the internet called The Kiffness who does the exact same thing with a keyboard. And yeah. from zero from just this little uh like cat going yeah. all of a sudden he's got this musical masterpiece an and orchestra it, yeah mm -hmm. and no it's, it's because it is very cool and i think that that here's one of the best things about embracing change right is there's kids that saw that and got inspired and now utilize yep. that technology. And exactly. there's people that saw that and said, that's not, that's not the way that you're supposed that's to do fake. it. That you didn't All go right, to well, the school. And I brought this up with auto tune the, the other day, right? Knocks. Exactly. You, you didn't go to the school of hard knocks. You got to suffer. You know right. what I mean? It's like, <laughs> well, look, look at, look at it, the advances. Okay. Matt, to go into the movie section, the movies avatar. I mean, it took how long from concept to first creation? Like 10 years, I think it took Cameron to do that movie. Uh, that he allowed. had the idea. He knew the knowledge was going to be there. He just didn't have the equipment. And now <clears> he, he needed, has the equipment. He needed he needed Lord of the Rings to happen first. And yeah. Then it was well, like, but okay, it's, we can do this now. Exactly. It's the same concept <laughs> of, okay, I've got this idea. I want to build on that, but is the technology there? Is my knowledge there? I mean, that's honestly where I am right now because I'm I'm budging up against AI technology in the way for filmmaking and for these things. And there are certain hiccups that it has that I am unwilling to accept for certain stories at this point because of how I want them to resonate. So then it forces me to learn other technologies, other things to facilitate those ideas, right? And I think that's exactly, you know, similarly with the guitar stuff is it's if you get yourself in this place where you're just consistently creative, the game no and you're embracing change, the game no longer becomes, oh, why did they do that? Why did they change this? Why is this harder or whatever? The game now becomes, holy shit, this exists now. This is easier for me. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's the fun part. And once you embrace that and use it, it's like, oh, my God, why didn't I know about this earlier? Well, you right. didn't open up your mind. Dad, I, I, right. Exactly, Craig. I was going to say, we just hit the two-hour mark. Dad, do you want to do like a last closing remarks? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And knock it out for us, or Craig, if you have anything else to say. <laughs> no, no, I just was, I know I was it's out of up. nowhere, but I know we like lose track of time when we do these, yeah. and and I want to make sure that they stick in that two hour mark because I feel like that's like the the spot that that's most people spot. like to watch. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. And the um the other thing about um you know I I what I sort of have like a bow to tie this up with is again is. After everything that we just said, it's obvious to me what side I want to be on. And that then comes down again to a mental decision. We see all these memes out there where, you know, two guys are sitting in a jail cell, you know, and one guy, you know, drawing the beautiful blue sky and the birds in the air, you know, that he's seeing through the bars. And then the other guy is also drawing another painting and he's drawing a picture of the bars. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that every one of you should really, really think about instead of being judgmental about things, yeah, I just find it very unique in life that people feel like they get to pick what you should but you get to pick the technology that you like. So, you know, with me being in business and watching everything go, you know, the phrase is still said, eyeball to eyeball, belly button to belly button. I want to shake a person's hands and look into their eyes. And then there was another group of people that go, yeah, but I'm looking at Craig right now and I'm looking at Matt and I not only can feel their emotions, but I can also look into their eyes. So it's like, I just find it very interesting that each person is individual with their own DNA. So then what they constantly get to do every day is say what technology is bad and which one's not. Because every time I guarantee you, I challenge every one of you, you can reach out to me. I challenge every one of you that if you told me you didn't like AI, I could find something that you use every day that the majority of the people on the planet are not using and you think it's okay. You think it's okay. So not everyone in the world has a smartphone, right? Not everyone in the world has electricity. Not everyone in the world has a TV. So I think it's really fancy or interesting, should I say a mystery that every person on the world gets to make their decision on what technology is okay for them and what other technology is taboo, right? Because there's this thing called a trend that everyone knows that I just think is hilarious. So I used to say this in front of a group of people before the internet, before the internet. And I said, why do people, you know, and, and I think you guys will love this, <clears throat> is, do you guys realize that virtually everyone in the United States might have one or more TVs? But each year around Christmas, around Super Bowl, there's this giant sale on brand new TVs. Now, if everyone had more than one TV, then why in the hell is everyone selling TV? You can buy TVs from everywhere, right? It's this thing called upgrade. We are okay with upgrading our lives, right? And, and so we get to pick what we want to upgrade on, but then people are mad that when you upgrade, see, you, you got to watch people. So, you know, Matt and I've been driving a Tesla for years. Not, we just got one. Matt and I are both on our second Tesla's. But yet there's this whole world that laughs when you see uh, uh, someone charging a Tesla on the freeway. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, so people will all jump on the bandwagon to make fun of automobiles that are electric. But if they were not working, then why every make and model making one? Okay, so if it wasn't working, Rolls is not going to come out with electric car, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Ford pickup, Ford Mustang. You know, some of you people that are Ford lovers, I love Mustangs. You can't buy a gas powered one anymore. Dodge is doing the same thing. Camaro is going to do the thing, same thing. 
So the cars that we used to love that were the classics of the past. And what do people say? Oh, it's safer. It's faster. It's quicker. Every area, it's better. And then you say that to a person and this is the response. Yeah, but I like the way it sounds. I like the loud exhaust noise. That's what I like. And it's like, <laughs> hey, I built race cars because of the word race. Fast. I want to get there quick. And I don't know if I shared this with you guys, but uh, I heard a guy recently that has a Tesla Plaid like I do. And he goes, one day, he says, you always had these arguments with all these friends that you used to be with. And now they're not your friends anymore because you're driving a car every day that can kick their car's ass. And he says, we all have egos. So we rent a racetrack and then we go out and prove it. And I kick their ass. He says, I don't know if you know people where if you do something and you keep kicking their ass, they're usually not your friends anymore. Because they don't want to adapt to change. But he said, I still didn't know how to communicate with my friends, how to get them to move to, into the future. And he says, I figured it out. And he goes, every one of my friends that have a car that can do nine seconds in the quarter mile at 152 miles an hour, they it's not street legal. They can't drive it on the street. It can't stop itself. That's why it needs a parachute. And it's not reliable. He said 90% of the races are lost because something in the motor or the drive train broke. And now we got the expense of rebuilding it for next weekend. He says, I had eight friends show up at the Drake strip and I raced one after another after another. I not only can do 152 miles in the quarter mile, but he says I can do it run after run after run after run after run after run. And when I get done, I'm driving it home. It's not going on a trailer. <laughs> and he says, here's another one. Do you know what cost for fuel is on a car that does nine seconds? It burns almost eight gallons of gas per pass. And the gas costs $40 a gallon. So you got to put $400 of high octane fuel into a car to get it to go 152. What else happens? Not only do you break, but you totally destroy a set of tires in three runs. That's $3,000. So he said, when I learned how to communicate with my friends, if you like going 152 miles an hour in three city blocks. The amount of money that you spend a year compared to me, because you get to listen to the sound and get your ass beat. <laughs> and he said, slow but sure, they're good friends and they don't want to give up on the gas powered car. But he says half of them now have plans. Because once they shifted, now it's that 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 bell curve that we talk about. So the thing that I brought up with televisions are pretty funny because I remember my father-in-law, you know, Matt's uh, uh, grandpa, is that he said to me, I remember that, I since I've been blessed to make so much money that every new TV that, that Sam has gotten has come from us, the Hollis family. And it was unfortunately that he got sick and, and, but every time that he had difficulty or he was couldn't move around or or um, you know he got diagnosed and died from cancer, you know what I mean? He had the very best TV that anyone could buy. And the thing I love about this story is when I first met Sam, we were watching something, a boxing match or something. And all of a sudden he goes, well, <clears throat> I think there's better fights on another channel. And he got up and changed the channel. And I went, you don't have a remote control. And he said, the day people are so lazy that they can't get off their ass to change the channel is gonna be a sad day. 
And in a matter of years, I watched him go from not changing the channel because it took a lot for him to get up. And all of a sudden, no one wants to know how the TV works. It's just, where's the remote? Where's the remote? We don't walk up the TVs anymore. I think today, some of the high-tech TVs, you couldn't find a way to shut them off without the remote. So slow but sure, it gets to that 10%. And then it gets to that 15%. And then it gets to that 20%. And then everyone goes, yeah, I, I might as well get a remote. I, I might as well get a TV that's a little high quality. And uh, I think it still blows me away today that, that every one of you that are watching this video, you just know for a fact that you get to make the decision on what upgrades you get to do in life. My question to you is why are you waiting for the upgrades? What kind of lies like we brought up in here? What kind of bullshit lies and excuses do you say to yourself not to upgrade? not to upgrade in every freaking area of your life. So stop saying, I can't, or I don't have time, or I'm technically challenged, because all that flat out is bullshit. You know, the story we use through YouTube to inspire people is an 87-year-old lady named Shirley that just held up a plaque for her hitting a million subscribers. If I were to guess, and I'm just guessing, she probably easily makes probably $100,000 a year from her YouTube channel. And she's retired. She does video games. She records the video games and shares them with other people. So here's a elderly lady, 87 years old, not worrying about money, being creative, and also plugged into a community that frickin' loves her. That's upgrade, 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 upgrade. So if we can do it, surely can do it, so can you. So I love and appreciate you guys so much. Please think about how to accept instead of deny. So Matt, Craig, I loved you guys on here and uh, you guys, you guys get to do whatever. <laughs> Thanks for that. No, I, I think that's a perfect place to end it. So Craig, do yeah. you have anything to say? No, no. Uh, summed it up in a very nice little nutshell there, Robert. And uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you also for this great discussion. And thank you for listening because you have the ears to hear. You can follow Robert Hollis at roberthollis.com. Also, if you'd like to join our exclusive community, the Inner Circle, you can join us by going to roberthollis.com forward slash join to register. There'll be lots of great exclusive content and you'll be able to participate in our special breakthrough sessions to help you move to the next level. Please don't forget to like and share this video on YouTube and share it with others. It will help our community grow and reach those with ears to hear. Thank you so much, Matt. Shout out to you, uh, our executive producer and visionaire, Robert. Thank you, of course. Craig. Bless you. Thank you so much. You are Dad, an thanks inspiration. Thanks for rocking it as always. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I love and appreciate you guys. This was fun. So yes. Thank you guys and so much for watching. Exactly. Yep. So on that note, this is Craig A. Jackman. Please be good to yourself. Be cash. And bye-bye. Love you guys. See you Thank soon. Thank you guys so much.